Welcome back, everyone, to ESL One Cologne 2015. We are here at the NVIDIA Expert Desk, and we've got Group D's winter match actually coming up. And then we'll also have Group C's winter match here on Stream A, so you guys can just stick here on one stream to view all of those winners' matches, see who else is going to secure their spot so far in the playoffs. So let's look at Group D, because we didn't have that on Stream A so far. A VP going through against Immunity, uh, as most people expect. And the Mouse Sports versus Cloud9. Cloud9 actually pulls through. Let's have a quick chat about that as we uh, see the players getting ready for the winners' match between VP and Cloud9. So I'm just going to throw this over to Moses real quick. Yeah, let's do it. He's got, like, the perfect analogy <laughs> for how Cloud9 deal with loss, right? And uh, oh, come yeah. back just I, from I, that. I knew it, like, when you see them la like just two weeks ago, whatever, but like at the Civo land that they, that they won, or they lost to Mouse Sports. Mm -hmm. They always just bring it right back. They always just counter it immediately after that. They have to lose to, I've been, I've been saying it, one day they're going to lose to every European team, and then they're just going to dominate the world. They're just going to have that stretch. <laughs> so what, what does that make them? That was your analogy. Dude, you want me to steal from you? <laughs> he's, he's I don't want to take you your glory. Success your I know. I don't want to take his glory. <laughs> it's like, bam. <laughs> I was setting you up. Was, it's it's a vaccine. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to it's get you to stop thinking about Guardian right. being, you know, God. Yeah, you're just trying to, you're trying <laughs> to hide <laughs> the fact that oh, it all is just. But in America, that causes autism. You've got to be careful about that. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. You really got to so, watch it. In the rest of the world, not just in America. Just in America. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. well, let's talk about that a little bit. That you, <laughs> we did. <laughs> As you guys were discussing that whole factor here for Cloud9 and how that seems to be the case so far, Moses, you said there was a caveat to that, and it seems to be VP, and that's who they have to play next. Yeah, this is like the one team they, they've never been able to figure out is Virtus Pro. Just, and and Virtus Pro has even talked about it in interviews. They're like, we, we love playing Cloud9. We, we feel really confident <laughs> against them. And it's not just Cloud9. It's every North American yeah. team, really, Virtus Pro just well, steamrolls them all. Honestly, it's not just North American teams. If we ask around, and we did that for a while, Samuel and I online, um, asked different players, you know, what's the what's the worst team, what's the toughest team you guys can play, and everyone says VP. Just mm. across the line, That's every true. every team says VP is no, the I'm glad hardest you, team to play. I'm glad you mentioned that, Moses, because um, there was an interview with, I believe it was Taz, who said, you know, like, they don't change anything. Yeah. You know, Cloud9, they don't change anything. Mm -hmm. But then that was like a Cloud9 at the beginning of the year when they were still getting messed up at Gfinity, right? Mm -hmm. This is a different beast of a Cloud9. This is, this is a Cloud9 that can change, right? So... <laughs> Is this a, is this a new a new era of North American dominance? <laughs> what what yeah. scares me about this tendency? Yeah, it just looks happy. What scares me about this tendency of Cloud9 is. is if you're if you're always playing that anti-strat game against other teams, you just by definition you're always a step behind. Like you're right. trying to predict what they're going to be doing. You're not you know, you're not taking sure. the game to them. So, I mean, what happens if you know? Versus Pro, maybe they change something. Maybe all the research that, that Sean's done is just going to go out the window. Yeah, that's possible as well. But then, you know, you have that, oh. that, that opera you keep mentioning. Um, yeah, he's really good. He's really, really good. <laughs> is he the best so, in the world, though? Yeah. That's yeah. the big question. The I mean, that's what you world. have to prove here yeah. at the major. He's, he's my number one. Yeah. Honestly, though. No. Number one in my heart. <laughs> Headshots only, huh? <laughs> Honestly, though, for, for, for Cloud9 to be, like, a step behind is still a step up from where they were earlier, where Sean was, like, trying to get, like, 10 steps ahead yeah. by having, like, uh, the most elaborate strats of all time yeah. and, like, 100 million smokes, and he'd be calling, like, the beginning of the round, like, so, like, you know, really elaborate prime. In the meantime, Shroud be somewhere just, like, you know, his brain just disconnected, no idea what's happening yeah. any longer, and just, you know, does whatever Which he feels like. smoke do I throw? Like. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... I thought that I was nothing. Probably yeah, the how I think pretty yeah, everyone on that team is except for Sean was keeping up at the end. So, <laughs> yeah, good times. Well, glad to see that that has changed for C9. Of course, if you're uh, rooting for them, uh, but what I mean, there's two sides to that. Of course, I mean you guys were mentioning well, if you're always a step behind, how far does it get you know get you? Maybe it's only going to be that one next match, and then they figure it out again, and you're like, all right, back to square one, back to being a step back. At the same time, you guys briefly mentioned well, VP uh, most teams kind of fear playing against VP. It's just a difficult team to play against. What part of their play is that? So, I mean, for one thing, this is a team that changes their in-game leader pretty much every tournament. That in <laughs> itself is super confusing. How do you how do you deal with that? Yeah. Um, I believe this time we're back to Taz calling, and generally what happens is Taz will call for a couple of weeks, and the rest of the team will hate him, and he stops calling. <laughs> yeah. um, and then it's somebody else to step it up. Um, quick question for all of you guys. Who was calling when they won Katowice? Do you guys remember? I believe that was Neo, wasn't it? It was Neo. Was it? So, and he also was calling when they won Copenhagen games uh, against TSM. Oh. And so I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying Neo is like the the chosen one when it comes to calling it, <laughs> but. Jeez. But then, uh, like Neo actually gets frags now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know. You want Neo to be occupied with the calling when he's clearly on point with the op right now. This is no surprise to Dust2 and Cash. These are like the two maps that Cloud9 like began their run on. Can I, can I, can I say this real quick? Train. Please cobblestone for the drops. 
Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my there, Lord. The there it is. Has spoken. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> I'm going to log into with like 100 accounts now. All right, <laughs> everybody, get <laughs> get ready to log in and watch this match because we're in Kabul here between VP and C9. But other than uh, for the drafts and for the viewing pleasure, what else are we looking at here for Kabul between these two teams? No, that is Skidoodle. the most important thing. Okay. Please. All right. Well, now that we've gotten <laughs> through the most important thing, as the secondary objectives of this major Moses, what else are we looking at here between C9 and VP? Well, no, you get a Dragon Lord. That's it. That's in the line. <laughs> Side by Side. I'm like, like digging really deep here. Yeah, it's it's like, no, trying. actually, no, but it's well, all we got <laughs> Remember, this is a map Cloud9 beat Fnatic on this in the uh, Pro League Finals, um, and and they're they're pretty good on it. They're solid. I mean, they've got they've got Skadoodle, uh, and they've got. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep throwing that name out there. Oh, you but, go for it, bro. Like Shroud and nothing. Like this is a map where they've they've shown very aggressive tendencies over towards that B bomb site, streaming out of drop. And yeah. just being very effective at getting into the bomb site. So, uh, and nothing has been doing a great job just playing in this like floating rotation support role between both bomb sites. All right. Well, it does sound like we are ready to jump in. Of course, still two more matches to get to bring to you guys. So, we'll be jumping right into the winner's match of Group C. It is again between C9 and VP on Cobble. Let's go. <sighs> Thank you so much, Trober and the guys at the desk. This is the map that we were actually looking forward to I, so much between I'm the I'm so two. glad it's come up as well. It's going to be such an amazing series. Like, what, Cloud9 are one of my favorite teams on Cobble especially. Yeah. I always talk about Shroud being such an important factor for them as well. Whether he's allowed to have the control he's had in previous tournaments is yet to be seen, but he is such a monster on the upper platform area. Like I'd say it time and time again, but no one seems to know how to shut him down, though. We saw Pasha playing against uh, Immunity earlier today, and he looked very strong in that area. So maybe one thing that's good about VP is they're so good at utilizing uh, the equipment they have available yep. to them. They can lock out teams for as long as possible, and that's very important for them. So this is going to be such an amazing matchup. And earlier we saw VP lose both pistols as well to immunity. So maybe they need to address that situation and definitely get one on the board. But yeah, this is, this is the game we wanted, and it, it's happened. It's coming. I, I can't believe it's this matchup. Quite genuinely, we were outside just after the last game. We were like, all right, do you know what the best maps would be? Cobble. That, that is all we wanted to see. We we're like, that would be such a perfect display. But do you agree with the desk there? Because, you know, Velus Pro seems to just kind of always just stomp out any NA hope that's breaking Absolutely. through. Absolutely. Like, they're they're, they're the have? NA destroyers. Uh, the last five times these guys have met up, I think... Uh, Cloud9 have only taken one map of them. That was cash. And that's what I saw going into the Vita. You knew that Vertispray would get rid of that, exactly what happened. And they go into this one looking very solid. But Cobble is a map that Cloud9 favor as well. They're very strong on that one. So it's going to be a really interesting series. I think the B bomb site is going to be instrumental to both teams as well. Cloud9 favored that quite a lot. They, they rush drop down almost every single round. They can get some great contention there. And it's going to be a really exciting series. Like Neo, obviously picking up the AWP recently. He's going to be an important factor. But going up against Skadoodle, he's one of the scariest couple players, especially on CT. He can make magic happen. So this is going to be really great. And this is the, the perfect outcome, I think, in terms of the veto. So this one could go either way. It's very hard to predict, but I think this is Cloud9's best chance of taking him up is on Cobble, so they're going to be happy with that. That's the way the V2 worked in their favor. But yeah, a really, really interesting series coming up. So Cloud9 have the best opportunity at hand here to possibly challenge the guys that have stopped them so many times before. So many other NA hopes have just run into the brick wall that is Virtus Pro. Now's the chance for them to break through, to get their position through to the quarterfinals, bearing in mind this is a huge game for both teams. Yeah, absolutely. So I talked about Neo being a factor. He shows a lot of aggression towards a long A area, but... Here we go then, the pistol is underway. We can see four sets of armor for Cloud9, and it's going to be Sean actually with one smoke grenade in hand. So we know they favor the B side, I talked about that quite a lot, but they are going to be making their way over all five players as well. So that drop down area we talked about so much, looks like it's going to come to fruition. And there's the smoke on the upper platform. A huge point of focus here, but the CT side fully, well, not maybe fully, but certainly aware of it now. Taz does get a stunning start, triple kill coming in for Taz, denying the start that Cloud9 would have wanted, pouring through that drop from and Bialy just places the bullets in towards Sean Garrison his brain and that's but Virtus Pro kicking off with a bang. Absolutely amazing stuff there from Taz. Normally when you know a team favors towards a drop down area it's it's advised you maybe let them take it and then you wait for the rotations to come from there but Taz <laughs> stepped up to the plate three huge headshots from him and what an amazing start he shut down that round within 10 seconds of it happening so amazing stuff from VP and I think that's why they're so strong in this map and here we go and what's the response from Cloud9 will they be doing the force but they will indeed Tech9's going to be there a few flashbangs in hand as well and a Molotov but this time they're going towards the A bomb side you can see I talked about Neo showing so much presence here, and they're going to be going through middle very fast here. They're maybe trying to lock down that player, but they get some control into mid area, and how can they execute the design now? And Snacks had a great bit of contact already, looking at the HP pool that well, Cloud9's working with. It's not great, and Snacks is going to plow straight through. Skadoodle's going to just mop that one up, but Neo is still there. He's holding this one strong. Flash is coming in, and the T side of Cloud9 
just not breaking through, but Freakzoid getting to a good little spot. They're using the smoke while the Bialy is waiting. Neo as well, and this is just a slaughter, but where's Shroud? Slowly working his way towards A. He's got an opportunity here. He's going to get the first. Let's get a couple of tags, but it's Taz to put him down. Virtus Pro keeping four alive, losing out on snacks, but all in all, a good round. Yeah, this is going perfectly for them so far. No bombs going down for Clannon whatsoever. The force buy from them there with the Tech Nines and uh, it means Virtus Pro can utilize that SMG perfectly. They got the perfect crossfires there and it went very well for them. And this round should be an automatic shutdown. You can see Cloud9 literally not buying anything now. It's going to be full Glocks and it's going to affect them going to the first gun run as well. We know the AWP is going to be a difficult purchase for them, so they need to make sure they could potentially get a couple of kills here, but VP definitely in the driving scene, getting a lot of cash together as well with farming with those SMG guns. Yeah, brilliant amount of money already being stacked up. Neo, of course, being one of them, going to possibly put him towards an AWP if he fancies it later in towards this game. Not a bad thing to start him off on. I'd love to see him picking that one up, but as you said, when Skadoodle's on the other side of things, it does become quite the point. And we saw in the game against Maus, Cloud9 didn't really get rolling until we saw Skadoodle start being able to pick up that orb once he got that's the economy the to do so. so. They, 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 it took so long for them to get it, and as soon as he did, that's when they stepped up and got back into this. But here we go, then we go into the third round. We said this should be a pretty much a throwaway round. There's P250s on the board for Cloud9, but what you can do with them on Cobble is yet to be seen. They obviously are going to be banking towards that B area. We said they favor it so much. Again, potentially just running out and trying to find some early frags there, but CT's going to be well aware of this, and they get slowed down straight away by the smokes, and this is what I'm talking about, Pash is so aggressive in this area. He utilizes the smoke so well, and let's see what the T's can do in response to this. It's a massive question, is it? Can they get anything out of this round? Snacks has already gone walkabouts, joined by Neo. They know where they're going. So much information already gathered. The T side has lost all element of surprise here, and that drop room is going to start uh, being covered in the blood of Cloud9 here. Freakazoid already gets picked up, and not able to make much of an impact so far. Taz leaps forward, gets the connection. That P90 is just having a great time. And Skadoodle, last man alive, not going to have much of a hope in this. He does at least get down Pasha. And they do manage to take away two weapons away from the players, but they were only SMGs. And let's be honest, Virtus Pro's bank is already looking quite formidable. Yeah, absolutely. When Cloud9 opted to send all five players towards that B site, it allowed VP to push their errors out, pinched them into that area, and they could work out exactly what was going on. But this is interesting now. They're keeping the P90s definitely viable towards the B area. So we've seen Taz in drop down and Pasha on the upper platform area. Those are perfect guns, actually, for their playstyle they're, they're putting forward right now. But Neo with the AWP again, we've seen him go very aggressive in the long hauls in previous games, and there he goes again. But he never only really takes the face. He kind of makes sure he wants to see if he can hear anything going on. But this time, he will take it. No AWP for Cloud9, though. They're going to be on a full rifle setup. This is the smoke we talked about. Cl Shroud trying to get the pick. We talk about him being the, the Terminator as well in this position. But... VP are going to be all too aware of this. Yeah, Pash is waiting. He does there it at the 90 Shroud, you pointed him out. He's a huge factor. Already gets the opener. But can Cloud9 now take the site? Can they make it off that platform? Oh, Pasha just unleashed. No, Sean Garris finds him. That's a great start here. Snacks now on the rotate. Neo still far away. It's down to Taz and Snacks to keep this one to hand. Bomb does go down. Four players on towards the site. Sean Garris waiting, watching. It's nothing, though, to find Taz. Now Neo, just the last man standing. This is a beautiful bit of play coming out from Cloud9. Clinical. You could say Neo will connect towards nothing, but I think he knows that's all he's going to get from this one, and off he runs. Yeah, it's a little bit of a gamble for me. If you're keeping the P90s, obviously we talked about it, it could be viable for them, but as soon as that smoke comes down, you always have to favor Shroud in that area. And of course, he picks up the initial frag, opens up the bomb site for his team, and they swarm on and take down four, three more frags after that. So, fantastic entry into this gun round for Cloud9 now. They only lose two rifles as well. It's not too bad for them. They want to be hunting down Neo here. They know he's got the AWP, so this is definitely worth the investment for they can find that. It'll be great, but it looks like he's going to survive. Now, that's pretty good news for VP. Obviously, they can utilize this weapon pretty effectively. The money's not too bad for them as well. We talked about them farming so much, so that definitely boosts the economy. Neo was going towards a long A area before. I wouldn't be surprised if he took it towards B this time, just to kind of shut down that play we've just seen from Cloud9. Well, it worked so perfectly. That's better. You know, let's, let's always remember the fact that they were so good at doing that. But then again, also, the P90s were there. Everything yep. is now laid out. So let's see what Virtus can pro, pro can do, really, with a little bit more rifle power behind them. Maybe not the best utility in the world, but enough to keep this one in check. And it looks like Cloud9, once again, eyes trained towards B. But this time, Pasha, not going to have the P90 fully set this time as Shroud already begins to hunt through. You've said how good this man can be. Let's see if he can step up to the plate once again. Cloud9 held back by these flashes. They're being slowed down, but no one going down just yet. But Shroud will find Pasha. Freakazoid towards Bialy. Once again, they're taking this side, but can the CT side of Verse Pro slow them down? Can they stop the part? No, it's all going well again. Cloud9 are keeping this one in check. Taz, Snacks, and Neo once again left in this predicament.
Bomb still ticking. Taz does find Sean Garris. Quick exchange with Freakazoid, but it's down to a 1v2, and I don't know if Snacks can pull this off. Surely he can't, and Skadoodle locks down two at the end, and Cloud9 pull this back so close. That's why I'm surprised that Neo didn't go towards B with the AWP then. They're exactly the same play again. Getting in, once Shroud gets in that position, he can call his teammates. It's clear they're not facing me whatsoever. They can swarm the bombs. I got that first kill, and then that's why I said the AWP could have shut that down. He could have been there making the easy picks, and we know Cloud9 favored that B bomb side so much. It's interesting why they didn't actually opt to try and counter that, but now that forces VP onto an eco here, and all of a sudden, Cloud9 picking up some momentum, just doing their standard stuff as well. They haven't really changed much at all. This is a classic Cloud9 play, and it looks like they will be opting once again to go towards this area. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if they can just keep this up for the rest of the game. It if really it is works, difficult to shut down. why change it, right? Let, let's be honest here. It's worked so far. It's doing well, and they're being fairly cautious with it. Just Shroud and Freakazoid are being such a potent duo in this, and just beautiful aim from Shroud then course, just against the, uh, well, the pistol side of Velas You can hear the war cries from here, <laughs> from Cloud9. That's, uh, they're definitely firing on all cylinders right now. Not dropping a single frag in this round. Neo going to be the remaining man here. Peter 50 in hand, but won't be able to do much. This bomb is ticking away now. But yeah, another successful B push from Cloud9. And you've got to ask yourself, do they just keep doing this? There doesn't seem to be a response from Virtus Pro. I saw against Immunity, they were actually getting up onto that upper platform area and facing it. That's what I think Passion needs to be doing, watching for Shroud to come for that smoke and at least challenge him, not allow him to have so much control and so much positional advantage in that area. Well, that's something we'll have to keep our eyes on to if they go into the next gun round. Will Pasha actually go for that challenge? Will they draw Neo across if well, he can get the orb this, again? This is where Sean can be really funny with this. He can be quite creative now. Mm. He can work out. He knows that VP is so scared of this push. Maybe he just sends Shroud there by himself and the rest of the guys going towards long A trying to stack the B-bomb side to lock this down, perhaps. That's what I'd be probably calling right now, trying to mix things up. You can see the buy still isn't great for VP. They're definitely clutching at straws here. They have got some decent smokes, but they haven't got the incendiaries to actually lock off the initial uh, the, the, the execution on the bomb side when it comes. So, obviously a big round here. Let's see how this one goes down. Will it be a different approach from Cloud9, or will they continue that pressure towards the B area? It's it's looking fairly close to... Nothing is heading you know, a little bit off onto its own, but nothing will be rejoining the rest of the pack and rinse and repeat, and why not? This time, though, Snacks is already over there. Bialy, Taz, they've got four players towards the B-side. Passion did push up, gets denied straight away. One for one trade, though. It's not gone as bad as before. No, that's what they needed to do. Passion needed to get out there. One for one still favors the teaser, and these next packs will be very important. They're aware it's coming, but look at this execution now. Taz has got his work cut out for him. Bialy's going to be waiting. Takes down Sean, and that is the bomb as well. Very important kill. Bialy had the opportunity then to even do more, but not going to be the point in this one. Snacks, though waiting behind the statue, but it's Freakazoid again. This man is having a brilliant tournament thus far, but Taz is still standing, but not until then. Skadoodle and nothing, close out the round. And it doesn't see, it, it's not just one player doing this. You know, Freakazoid has his moments, nothing then. Skadoodle, all of them just so proficient at that. So they're trying to respond as well. We saw Pasha go up into the upper platform area, but unfortunately nothing came of it. Making one frag is just not enough. You allow, like, That's all Shroud needs to do. If he gets one frag there and the exchange is made, four and four situation, you still favor the tease there. And even when VP had a four-man stack on the B side. They still don't know how to shut this down. There's no contention in the drop-down area as well. It's just four guys going straight out the upper platform. Nothing showing some aggression towards middle of the start. Maybe just to kind of mess with the, the, the CT's head. But here we go again. Why not? Let's keep going for it. I, I just want to see the one response, the one thing that gets thrown back in their faces that works, but it's not this round. Shroud already finds Taz, and of course the CT's limited amounts to work with here. And I'll be Ali, at least we'll find Sean Garris and stay alive towards the site and look at Snacks lurking behind. Doesn't have the opportunity to put anything toward it, as now just Neo left in this one. He's picked himself up a rifle and looks for more. He does get Shroud. Three left to go. You said that Neo has been improving drastically in recent times, but not that round. He can't quite shine that brightly. And once again, Cloud9 bomb plant in, completely controlled over B. And, well, this is what I want to see from Burst Pro. We're going to have the double orb setup coming out. This, this could the, be huge. This is the perfect response. I said getting the AWP in that area really does shut down this play from Cloud9. It means that Shroud won't have such easy pickings towards the B site. It means that even if he goes for the face, he, he should be getting locked down now. This is the, if this goes wrong for them, I'm not really sure what their options are. Pasha, with the AWP, no equipment to speak of, but he is going to be the one trying to lock this down and they need to work it out now. And you can see all five players coming in once again. This is it. This is the real test. This could be the breaking point. Let's see what we can do here. Shroud does get shut down this time. This is the difference. Finally, Pasha does make the impact, but it's a one-for-one -one trade again. The orbs now removed from B. Bear in mind, Neo pushed out of A. He's got control. The Taz is going to push close. The flashes come through, but the T side a little more cautious, a little bit more pensive this time. 
as Skadoodle made out, smoke out. Viali is on the side there, catches a glimpse. Skadoodle won't hit that shot, but one minute left for T-Side. They're not going to just re-rushing this one. They're taking their time here. Well, Neo with that great position as well. They've got a great read on this as CTs can stay in that B site. They know it's coming. Frag's being exchanged now. Three on three situation. Only two on the bomb side though. Skadoodle takes down Bayali. Fantastic frag and that should allow them to get the bomb down now. Neo really needs to work out what he's going to do. He needs to get back into this round and Snacks looks like he'll be taken down again. And Neo now too far out of this round. Three on one situation. Coming in the back. Not going to be able to find a pick here as well. So another fantastic play from Cloud9. Even losing that initial frag. We talked about Pasha trying to get that opening frag. He did it as well, but nothing responded straight away and took the frag back. So it's just, what can they do? How can they get into this? If the double orb setup's not working for them, Neo's even pushing to the top of middle. And they know exactly what's going on, but they just can't seem to find the frags. They're too strong when they come out of the upper area there. So amazing stuff from Cloud9 so far. And this is exactly what we were expecting, but I didn't think it would be this formidable. And it's just rinse and repeat because it doesn't need to change. As you say, it's just been working out so well. And this will be another one going on the board board for Cloud9. Neo does manage to stay alive, at least with the AWP, but he's probably going to be frustrated by this one, you can imagine. Just been completely locked out of this game so far. He's just not had the opportunity in this. And it looks like Verse Pro going to be pretty much going back into this one. But what can they do here? This, this needs well, to change. <laughs> well, I said that was the perfect response to what was going on. And I think that now they've got the Pasha Last game, he did do some big work with the Max 7. We know he can be pretty scary in that area with that gun, but the way Cloud9 are playing right now, I'm not even sure what the response can be. How do you get back into this one? Maybe a boost into the drop-down area would be good, just to kind of okay. get behind the tees and see what happens. Well, at least Neo this time is coming over towards B. Snacks this time is going to be sat on his, on, on his own by A, and now Shroud is waiting again. Biali, tempted by the boost then. Not going to take it though. Tag comes out. Shroud this time. Tagged up. Pasha with the double. Sean Garris Skadoodle already down and out here. Shroud trying to get themselves back into this. The nade could take down Neo here, but he stays alive on 2 HP. The molly going to have to keep him on his toes. He does get taken down. We're in a 3v2. Make it a 3v1. Finally, Virtus Pro starting to control Cloud9. Who would have thought the Mark 7 would save the day as well? I said before, that's what Pasha did against Immunity. He picked up the same thing. Two, one shot, two kills, and there's going to be nothing here in the three-on-one with the bomb down as well. Very difficult position, gets smoked out here. But the amount of rounds they've had in a row, there's no reason why he can't go for it and just grind down the CT economy even further. Yeah, Viali is weak as well. He will take him down. But finally, Virtus Pro make their impression. They find maybe an answer to what Cloud9 were doing time and time again. But can you depend on that? We're going to find out Pasha has gone back to it. So clearly feeling that is the best way to deal with this. Well, I'm not sure it's the best way to deal with it. It <laughs> worked that time. So they, it seems like the only response they've actually had to been positive is a Max 7 up close and personal. But that's why I was saying they should have done this. Instead of allowing the T's to come out so far, they need to be up in that platform before they can smoke them out and perhaps getting the early frags. But again, <laughs> Cloud9 going towards B. I'm not really sure how we can dissect this and analyze it further. That is going for the same play every single time. It's just a response we're waiting for from VP. And this time, Neo's not there. Biali will, however, make you know a little bit of work happen with Taz, picking up Shroud early on. That's a great beginning here for Virtus Pro. But we still know that nothing's been great. This Freakazoid has been a real brute force towards following up after Shroud on towards this site. But now all the Virtus Pro players are here. There's five <laughs> players present. They're not messing around. They know what's going on. They maybe had a second of doubt, but no, they know this is happening. Sean Garris gets found by Biali. Nothing's made his way out, but can't make anything out of it. As Neo was just waiting in drop. And now it's Skadoodle shut down. Neo locking that one out with Biali and Virtus Pro pulling it back in. Yeah, it seems like the HG grenades that have started around seems to be a very good answer to this. Cloud9 aren't waiting at all. They're not delaying what they're doing. The Stroud's running straight through as fast as he can, and he gets taken down with, a, I think it was a triple uh, HG setup from them. But all five players having to go towards the B site now. What a response that is. What a statement it is to show how strong Cloud9 are taking that bomb site. And uh, now they get the AWP out. Maybe a change of pace for them here as they're actually going towards the mid area. Skadoodle's going to be leading the charge here, but you can see the CTs are kind of expecting a change of pace. Oh, it doesn't matter though. Skadoodle already denying the We've seen him time and time again pushing out towards A long. This time gets challenged and loses out, and there's still Shroud on B. This was something you theorized could have happened earlier even, that maybe you just still send him there. But this time, Taz able to come into his own. Deny Sean Garrison drop. They're starting to play a little bit more passively almost versus Pro, with you know, Taz playing outside of drop, not committing fully. I guess when they're seeing players over by A, they don't want to fully buy into it yet. Well, it's the drop down area is not being used that much, so it doesn't really make sense to commit players to that. You might as well have guys playing passively that can help out on the upper platform approach. But now, like you said, a slower pace here. Skadoodle getting boosted up, trying to see over the smoke where we can find something he may actually take down. Oh, oh, if only make it. he knew, of course, the smoke was there, but Skadoodle 
still finds it. Pasha goes down. And once again, B is under threat. Bialy's pulled himself back here. There's three players on that platform waiting to push in. 40 seconds left. Bialy's going to have to come up with a good this time. Help is on the way, but a little too late. Shroud doing what he does best. This guy is just showing you a masterclass in how to take B here. As Shroud pushing forward, finds another. He's not done. He wants to just add insult to injury. Stacks now. Last man standing. Already picked up two. How much can be asked of one man? And there's the answer. Freakazoid takes him down and Cloud9. Just that touch of a switch up, but they're still so good at this. I don't know how Skadoodle found that pick onto Pasha there on the upper platform. I didn't see anyone <laughs> on my screen, but of course he finds the pick. And once again, they make their way onto the bomb site and Shroud picking up some very valuable kills as well. And that pushes the CT economy even further down into a spiral. The Max 7 coming out once again. They've lost that AWP that Neo has been utilizing at the side alley area. But here we go. It's going to be more players back towards the A's this time. And maybe they can just bait out the B setup. Just get the same smoke down. Try and peel some CTs back and then execute towards A. This is actually a really nice response. But Neo, once again, he's going to be over towards A by himself. But he's got the M4 this time instead of the AWP. So difficult for him to get as much information as he has done in the past. Yeah, he's not able to play as, let's say, aggressively mm. as he'd like to. Shroud is still doing the same thing, but Neo will be put under scrutiny soon enough. Shroud still having a little glimpse. This time Bialy switching up, going to pick up him. And now we finally see Verspro with the advantage at the start of the round. It feels like a lifetime uh, since we've last seen that. But Neo dealing with it well, not letting them take full control on long, still allowing Snacks to push up too. This could be big. Great play from Snacks there, stopping those two players and cutting Cloud9 pretty much in half here. Absolutely. So we saw Shroud trying to mimic the same thing we've seen almost every single round. Unfortunately, if he had found a, a pick there, that would have been great. He would have done exactly the same reaction. The CT's been pulled away and that AXQ would have worked out perfectly for them. But he got taken down and finally it looks like HP may be able to scrap some money together, not losing any frags in this situation. Skadoodle and Sean both opting to save here. 35 seconds remaining on the clock. I wouldn't advise VP go hunting them. They just want to try and save as many guns as they can and maybe get some economy in their favor for once. But it looks like finally they have the response to what's going on. It's been such a crazy game so far. I can't believe how many times they've gone towards B and got away with it as well. But five rounds on the board, now six for VP. I wouldn't be surprised though if Cloud9 came back and they're gonna, it looks like they're going to win this half. They're playing so phenomenally well right now. They have just drastically improved. You, your mind always goes back to when these two previously meet. And on paper, even the guys that they're saying, you know, Pro Classic are taking down NA teams always just just never seemed phased by it that's but now we're seeing Cobble. such a difference that's when we saw Cobble come into the veto that's when it got exciting me for okay this is a map where Shroud is so formidable I always call him the Terminator on this because <laughs> he just seems to find a killer absolutely nowhere mix that in with Skadoodle as well and his club sort of play picking up vital frags in the retakes as well it's so scary to play against but looking at the money now it looks like it's actually a pretty much forced by from Cloud9 they've got the AWP obviously saved but the money isn't great in the rest of the camp so AK saved and they will kind of try and keep the money relatively healthy going into future rounds but it's pretty much it's a big investment as well but here we go then it's a AWP on Skadoodle Shroud of the AK as well they've been the point men definitely on this map so far but finally a chance for VP to get a few rounds together at least Shroud coming out though here he comes what can he make of this it's Shroud's platform now he's pretty much claimed state to this just by sheer presence alone but will be forced back a little bit he's not having such an easy time as you said once their utility starts coming to place for the CT side they can actually force him away brute force him away allow Pasha some presence there but the T side you know Cloud9 having to be a little bit more respectful of this but then again we saw that you know Skadoodle can still find those shots even when the T side has been pushed back a little bit well, this is a round VP should be winning in this situation. You can see there's not really much op many options. They haven't got positional control. That's Cloud9 on those. But going towards B once again, Skadoodle's actually in the drop down area. Seeing if he can find a frag, I don't think anything's going to come his way. So it may just be the standard execution for them. They've got one smoke, two smokes remaining, in fact. So whether they'll be going for the very similar picks, but we can see Pasha now actually on the platform contending that position. Yeah, Taz just waiting passively by drop. We've seen him fall back. You said there's been very little point in challenging this because they haven't played it too much, but now he can come around the backside as they drop in. That's Freakazoid removed, but Pasha now surrounded. Skadoodle has free reign, but Bialy pushes out from that platform, and now he should be able to lock it down as he does, leaving just Skadoodle alive. And Valdus Pro finally starting to work this one, but as you said, that was a round they should be picking up. Yeah, absolutely, considering they had three Tech Nines there on the, the buy. They go into this last round now with uh, a pretty ropey setup as well. They're going to be full Tech Nines, some Deagles there. I don't think any rifles can have this play whatsoever. Well, Skadoodle does have three grand. He could bring a good little to the party if needed, but it is not going to happen. They're going to get concentrate on the utility here. So perhaps more of a set piece coming into this. I wouldn't be surprised if it did the same thing, went towards B, dropped as many smokes as they could, just try to get out, take that initial frag. And as soon as the bomb goes down, it becomes very interesting at that stage. But it looks like they're actually going to be utilizing the, the drop 
drop down area more this time. Yeah, putting a little more focus towards it. It has worked out before, you know. Sean Garris got behind them, but again, it's going to be Shroud making his way out. He's already out towards B. Pasha does find one, but three players pouring through drop. He's going to add so much pressure here towards Virtus Pro. Bialy finds Sean Garris, but look at this. Nothing and Shroud is still alive. They could get something done here. Nothing's recovered in AK, but no. Snack says no. Shroud now 1v3. Tech 9 to hand. And not a great deal else. They know where he is. And he shouldn't be able to get away with this one. He does find Pasha. Molly comes out. He... Ooh, one HP here. He needs to be careful that Molly. A little close for comfort. Flash comes in and snacks. Closes it down. Virtus Pro will at least lead by a touch on this half. But that was extraordinary play from Cloud9. A crazy spell of rounds when they got six in a row on the terrorist side. Had they have won the pistol as well, this would be too far gone for VP to get back into. But... Winning the half is very important for VP. I don't think this is as much as a CT bias map as people conceive it to be. It's definitely when you have creative play like that from Cloud9 and they're able to run the execution so effectively, you can definitely pick up a lot of rounds. And VP we saw struggling a lot. They had to almost commit five players to the beat bombsite almost every single time just to lock down what Cloud9 were doing. But once they did find out how to do it, it seemed like Cloud9's other options going towards the slow plays towards A, it didn't seem as much, uh, it didn't seem as impactful as what they were doing before. So well played to VP to actually get back into this. It looks like it was going to be a horrible situation for them. They actually made it pretty competitive now. Going into the second half, Pistol is going to be so big for both teams. I, I think. VP are feeling the pressure after that one, especially they didn't take a pause either, which is interesting. I would have definitely called for a tactical pause at, at some stage just to kind of work out what they can do and react to it. You saw them try the AWPs and it was actually the Max 7 that kind of got them back into that yeah, series. That double from Pasha that yeah. you actually called out the start. It was, it was the thing that helped them previously that they brought back in and it actually worked. And off the back of that, they, they seem to start building around it. But let's also take into account what do we make of Verse Pro on their T side, Cloud9 now on the CT side. Is there a favorable you know, side there for these teams specifically? Or is it literally just down to how they're playing it just, just directly in the down, rounds? Yeah, the it's such a fragging map, right? You, it just comes down to who's opening up. VP favor the B bomb side as well. They've got some very good executions, but after that, they probably on, they're probably a little bit rattled. It's, it must have been a very stressful game for them. You can see they look uh, Cloud9 looking very cool and calm. But uh, yeah, this is definitely the game we hoped for, and it's been very exciting so far. So pistol round going to be huge. I'd expect to see. VP do something very simple going into this one. They probably wanted to opt for a B rush themselves and show that they can do they the can same do it, thing, yeah. get in there. It's 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 definitely the most preferred option to do. We saw Taz lock it down so well in the drop down area. That's kind of an anomaly. You don't see many CT teams able to convert three headshots into a drop down rush, but let's see how this one goes down. And having a look at the T bar, we can see the pistol run is just about to begin. Time so taking away to see the armor coming up for them three players on armor, but two utility players as well. So they've got two smoke grenades, which suggests something a little bit more methodical as well. But Cloud9, I wouldn't be, suggest, wouldn't be surprised if they went for something quite aggressive and uh, showed their force elsewhere on the map. Uh, here we go, Freakazoid going to be the one towards a long area by himself. And that's going to be the bomb as well for VP. So not a fast play from them. They're going to do something quite tactical here. So maybe just trying to get some attention towards the B side. I, I can't wait to see this play out. You said it would be a little bit more tactical, a little bit more, let's say, refined, and it certainly looks as though it's going to be that. But Shroud is going to be just gifted, presented Neo on a play after he was just boosted up by drop. But Taz and Snacks work it out on long. So A is completely open. The CTs on the rotate, pouring back in towards A. Snacks, Pasha, Taz, and Bialy still alive. Look at the reaction from the T's there. They're doing the opposite. They're going back towards B straight away. So this next round, very important. Bialy showing some presence in the drop down area. Now CTs need to work out what's going on as well. Taz is going to be instrumental here. If you can find a frag, it's going to confuse Cloud9 no end. Yeah, let's see if he can sell the fake, see if he can keep them in place. I think Skadoodle and Sean Garris are pretty much lapping this one up. Only nothing keeping that B-site in mind, and he's going to be screaming for help soon. Snacks, Bialy, Pasha, all starting to come towards the site. Nothing gets dinked, taken down. They've taken the site by force. Skadoodle is there. He can't take the shot towards the site. Bomb is planted, and look at this. Just Shroud alive, and one by one, the pieces fell into place. Shroud already doing marvelously. That can't do enough as Virtus Pro will pick up the round. Really clever play from VP. I actually loved that pistol round. It was perfect. Perfect. They show presence towards the B platform area, utilizing that smoke, trying to suggest they're doing the same thing. Freakazoid pushed out the long A area, thinking he had no contention whatsoever, made his way to the top of middle, but there was that stack waiting for him with the bomb as well. And then there's so much confusion from the CT side that they all started peeling away to the A site. They had no real information as to what was going on. And of course, VP went back to B, had no contention whatsoever. I think it's just one player from Cloud9 waiting for them. So a perfect round, but the response here from Cloud9, the scouts coming out and uh, the 5-7 in armor as well. So this is obviously a very big round. Taz showing a lot of early aggression. He's to find three players in the back. What can he do with this? Fluffs his lines a little bit and the CTs have him time to reset themselves. But there we go. Picks up the first round of Skadoodle.
How the hell has this just happened this way? Why is it a 1-for-1 trade? But finally, Pasha comes in and says, all right, if you're not going to do it, Taz, I'll just come out with a big Mac Daddy and pick up the two kills. Shroud's going to be pinned down. He can't do much in this one. And Snacks will claim the last. But as you noted then, Taz just straight in. Zero care in the world. Didn't hit the shot, but they get the round. I thought that was an easy spray down <laughs> for him. Like, get that, get that one locked down. But it was a little bit harder than we thought it would be. But... Ultimately, a pretty clean round for VP, yep. getting in there, locking down the CT force by, and that's going to be difficult for Cloud9, right? So they're going to go into the first gun round. Uh, Skadoodle potentially not going to have the AWP now, and that's where it comes difficult to the CT side because you don't have the same amount of utility or diffuse kits, and you definitely don't have the AWP. So they need to be careful now going into these rounds. They want to probably take a couple of kills and PT50s coming out for them and uh, some five sevens as well. HE on nothing, but they haven't really stacked to a certain side. They're playing this like a normal round. Three players towards B, but the T's is very cautiously holding the very long angles. You can see three players top middle. To Seeing for any CT pushes that come to mind, but the bomb down, just seeing what the CTs are doing. They're trying to ascertain the setup here and where the stacks may lie. Yeah, just trying to feel out the map, get the idea, as you mentioned. And now, slowly but surely, it looks like Verse Pro are putting presence towards that B side. Pasha, Snacks, all there, but not going to be moving out hap handedly. Too much to be lost out on. They do have the rifles, of course, and nothing. Oh, it's heating up. He's going to have to make that move. Does get taken down. Neo going to push him out of place. Snacks deals with Skadoodle, and this should be comfortable. Shroud makes it pretty expensive, though. That's two down for, well, a P250. That's two rifles lost here. Shroud, can he make it a third? No, and now it's on towards Freakazoid. 1v3. I don't think he's going to find much here. Surely they're going to be aware. And as Bialy's catch a glimpse, Taz could finish this one off pretty swiftly here. And Taz, there we go. Taz will finish it off in the end. And Verse Pro keeping three alive, bomb plant in. They're doing well so far. Yeah, absolutely. A pretty clean round for them. But this is what I was talking about before. They go into Cloudline, go into this first round now on the back foot. Definitely, they don't have the same amount of equipment available to them. They definitely don't have the AWP, and this is huge for them. Losing this round is going to mean a five 0 deficit on the second half. And VP are looking pretty strong on that. That's both pistols in the bag for them as well. So statistically speaking, they have a huge advantage here going into the second half now. But Neo has got the AWP, and we need to see something more assertive in the CTs now. They need to find the first frag to get them into the position and not allow the bomb to get down. We can see only one kit available. That's going to be on Skadoodle. Yeah, Neo there, watching towards A-Long. Not going to catch a glimpse of them, though. There were two players pushing up the touch, but very different. And we are seeing a little bit of a, a little bit of a peak trying to be made by Freakazoid there, but doesn't find much. Snacks will get the first. That shroud down. That's a massive presence already removed. The turret, the Terminator. The man who's just causing so much pain yep. already gone. And, well, Cloud9 going to have to be so cautious going forward. There's still a lot of time on the board as well. You see Neo just kind of scouting out middle, seeing what he can find here. The CTs having to look at so many different angles. They're waiting now, look, lying, ready for the T's to execute. Could always be fully flash takes. Taz does take him down, and that's a really nice execution of the site. Leaves the CTs in a horrible position. Of course, Freakasaur and Sean need to save here, and that's what I'm talking about. Not having the AWP presence, not being able to lock down the map so cleanly as they would have liked to. We saw them actually commit two players towards the long A area, which is kind of... A risky play as well. You're mm. so far away from the B setup. As soon as that B round did uh, fall away from them, it's so hard to come back into that. It's just too far gone at that stage. But saving the guns will be great for them. They can potentially contest the next round. But it looks like Freakers will be getting taken down. Great shot from Neo there. And now it's the 5 and one Sean just cowering away in the corner of the A site, seeing if he can save that gun. But I think that the T's know they need to hunt him down and just grind down that CT economy even further. And it's what I'm talking about. It's the 5 nil deficit you didn't want to go into. And I think that second round by, I wouldn't have called that. I'd have probably said, let's make sure we go into the gun rounds as strong as we possibly can and get the momentum back in our favor. Mm. As you said, carrying almost quite literally, Sean there, just trying to tuck his head down. Not get spotted out, and he will at least retain the weapon into this one. But Flutus Pro now, 12 to 7. Their T side has looked very strong. We are going to see a pause coming out for Definitely Cloud9. Good, good call now. <laughs> and this is something you said that you, you were almost expecting from Flutus Pro when they were feeling this sort of pressure, but it never came in. But Sean going to call that one through. And, you know, if you're in his shoes now, what are you what are you talking through? What are you discussing at this point? Well, right now they need to balance the economy. They need to make sure they're going in with full buys. They need the smokes, they need incendiaries. They need Skadoodle available on the maps so he can actually show presence elsewhere. They can probably have him anchor on A, allowing the other guys to stack towards B. Right now that seems where Virtus Pro are actually favoring, but they are they're approaching the map kind of kind of differently. They're actually working out what the CTs are doing. They're going showing presence towards middle and A, but then going back into B. And it, it seems like the, that setup is being too strong, especially when the CT economy is pretty. Ro pretty uh, much room. You can see there's Sean there. He's, last time he was in this situation with Steve, I think I remember listening into their game and you just mm. hear him say, I don't know what to do. 
I'm not sure what our players here, and he knows they're really up against the ropes. It's a big decision for them right now. They've got one M4 available to them. They def I don't think they can justify forcing into this one with five sevens and stuff. It'd be a very tricky round. You can see them. Not a lot of communication going on as well. No one's really talking for them. I think they're just trying to work out what they can do. I guess this round is almost over. They probably shouldn't. They should just try and use Sean's mm. rifle, maybe hand it over to Shroud, see what he can do, push an area, maybe. A, a full on push into the mid perhaps could be good just to work out whether there's one T isolated by himself that could be Neo. Um, but you can see they look broken right now. That's a day and night compared to the first half when they looked yeah. like they were really enjoying themselves. We heard the battle cries coming from across the room. But yeah, they look like a little bit lost right now. And this is exactly what happened at the Sivo event I just referenced. <laughs> As soon as VP started locking them out at the start of rounds, they, they didn't know how to, to execute and get back into it. It was very difficult for them. And this is why VP are the NA uh, destroyers almost. But this applies throughout for Verse Pro. How many teams will say that we just don't know what to do against them? It was even said on the desk that so many teams struggle with how to deal with Verse Pro when they play the way they do. You know, who's in game calling for them this time? Who's, who's leading them in the rounds? And sure. so many variations available. But Cloud9. They need an answer pretty soon. Let's be honest here. It's it's starting to look a little bit, a little bit worrying. Let's be honest. When when do the nerves kick in? Of course, it's now. It's this is the opportune time to try and make a change. But when does it almost become too much? Is there a point where you know they run out of options, or surely they've got more tricks up their sleeve? Well, here we go. Then they haven't obviously haven't opted to do the force by here. They're keeping the rifle, trying to focus on the next round. So you can only assume this round. Will We'll go 13-7 in favor of VP. Four players committed to the B side. You've got Neo, like I said, isolated top of middle. Just, just getting information, seeing if that, if that push does come to fruition. But the guys taking this a lot slower. They're kind of baiting out that same smoke, trying to get the attention towards the upper platform area. But it seems like the guys will be going towards the drop down zone and seeing that Neo there, just making sure he keeps the calls fresh and working out what the CTs are doing. But this looks like the execution now coming in for VP. And it should be quite a clinical round for them. Just get smoke off the key choke points and go frag for frag together onto the side. It should be a, a clear up for them. Let's see if they can keep this as clean as possible. I, I doubt they're going to lose out on much here. Snacks pouring through already, it's cutting those four players in half. They can just single out Sean Garris. He's now down. That's the rifle gone. One of them can hold the rotate, and they can just walk free towards A, and that's Pasha. Pasha just being the gatekeeper right now. He does get taken down by a shroud, but the bomb should be able to go down fairly freely. But at least Kadoodle are going to pick up the rifle, maybe able to get a challenge here. Yeah, tactical masterclass for DP there. Really baited out the B uh, play there, and you can see Cloud9 were fully committed to that as well. They're ready for it. They're kind of expecting it any moment, and then they went through <laughs> connector and went straight away, got the rotating kill as well. Caldon had no idea that was going on. They were fully committed on that B site. They will get a kill and save two rifles here, so that does yep. help. I talked about stabilizing the economy. This definitely helps towards that, but that's 13 rounds on the board for VP. And then in the driving seat, that allows them to do more audacious plays here. They can probably opt to do, the, let's just do a straight up B rush next round. Let's just keep the, keep the pressure on, not let uh, VP try and, uh, sorry, not let Cloud9 adapt to what we're doing. But this is when we'll see the orb come in. There's a, no doubt in my mind that they'll have to get the AWP out and skadoodle and try and recover some of their rounds that have been so huge. And that's going to be the. Oh. In the fifth round in a row now for VP, and they're looking very strong right now. 13-7 is the scoreline. And, the and they lose both rifles. Down. Devastating stuff, but there we go. The AWP does come out. This is when they can get back into the game, and they can work out what they can do. So the obvious place is to send them towards B, try and maybe boost them up. Maybe go for that initial frag. Don't yep. allow VP to even come out. They want to just try and lock down that first frag and get themselves back into the game, as it were. Let's bear in mind that Mouse Sports game was not looking good for Cloud9 until Skadoodle picked up the orb. This changed everything for them before. We're not overselling this one. This is something that worked previously. He is playing on towards that B site. Definitely not going as aggressive as I thought he may do, sitting back by that coop. So maybe just wanting to see if Verse Pro are actually going to commit towards B, if they're actually going to play towards him. Verse Pro taking their time, once again, not committing anywhere just yet. No, they're just feeding the map out. Uh, again, just seeing, just seeing where the stacks lie and whether they can get any sort of position or advantage to push the CTs back and make sure they lose their information. Freakazoid's going to be the linchpin here. You can see he's so committed and uh, they're going to be focusing on that long A area, but they may get some contention here for the first time. VP trying to work the frags there, and this is going to be very important. These next couple of uh, frags will be Neo leading the charge as well with the AWP, and he's going to find a CT player any moment now. You can see them just waiting for it as well. Yeah, it's Sean Garris just waiting around that corner. Freakazoid pushed in as well. This is going to be huge, and Snacks opens it up already, removing that threat along. But will they look for Freakazoid? They've surely got to check for this. Shroud exchanges. He brings it back, and there we go. Freakazoid makes his impression known. Taz, though, round the back again. Back and forth. 3v3 now. But the T side already showing presence towards A. Neo pushed up. Nothing's there. Shroud was there. Neo connects the shot. Nothing denies him. They're going back and forth on every single kill. But there's still Skadoodle. 
There's still nothing, and the bomb has not crossed yet. Skadoodle, eyes trained, he needs to hit this shot, oh. and he misses it! That is so uncharacteristic, but nothing will at least stop Taz. And now Pasha caught in the crossfire. Finally, Cloud9 break the trend. So Freak is already lying in that uh, danger area, he's sometimes calling it, but um, he who's so instrumental there, he hit that frag, he got in the, the rotation, got the bomb down as well, allowed the CTs to get that information, they can rotate, and nothing made such a huge play there, made his way onto the bomb side, jumped up onto the, onto the roof, and made sure he got the frag he needed to do. Skadoodle like we said, an uncharacteristic miss from him made it interesting. But the double orb set up now, and this is where the Cloud9 can get the ball rolling and potentially get the momentum back in their favor. They need to string a few rounds together now, but VP opting to go back towards the B platform now. Neo holding the top of mid once again, and you can see the orb is there in a standoff. No one wanted to face is going to be Sean holding the long A area, and I think Neo just caught a glimpse of him and takes him down. Great play by Neo there, and that's exactly what he had to do. The CT's now lacking information towards the A side, and it means it can only afford to have three people towards B, but Skadoodle, of course, answers back, and that's what we're talking about. Having him that area, he can be so strong and make the picks that count. Now it's down to where do they go? Do they work from that first pick? Neo still looking for a little more. Nothing and Freakazoid are on A though. They've had to hedge their bets on the CT side. Shroud and Skadoodle on towards B. Nothing starting to look a little more, trying to keep tabs on this. I think he may spot Neo here. Oh, most Good. stunning shot from Neo. Already opening up the round and making it hurt here. Freakazoid will at least deny the cross. The bomb was actually looking towards A. That's with Pasha hanging around by long. Taz still pushing up, makes the shot count. That's Freakazoid down. Now here we go. Skadoodle, 1v2. These situations, you can never ride him out on, but here we go. He finds Taz. Can he find the second? It's Pasha against Skadoodle. And this is a huge round for Cloud9. 31 seconds left. Skadoodle adjusting. Oh, Pasha's already moved, though. He's moved away from long. Pasha's backing up. He's got 24 seconds. This is going to be quite the race here. Skadoodle has to be careful, though. He has to be cautious. He can't just leave A. He needs to make sure. And here we go. So he will have time to get the bomb down. Skadoodle not aware of this. So the fact that Pash is getting in uncontested is going to be great for him. You can see Skadoodle so invested in his A bomb. So bomb does go down. And now you really do have to favor Pasha. He can play the mind games. So he can get in almost any position. He's got so much time. And Skadoodle, AWP in hand, has got healthy HP. But this is a very difficult round. But if there ever was a man to do it, he is the one. And he's just balling in. Look at this guy, just walking in with the USPS, and Pasha will just grin and slap him to the ground. That is a beautifully played out round by Pasha, not just rushing it, not just wasting it. He took it all the way around towards B, but that was quite close, but Skadoodle then just seemed almost frustrated by that. I, I'm not really sure how that went down. I guess he was so investigated, so he, he, I guess he was trying to be too clever. He thought, okay, he's probably faking to go in towards B. I, I, I'm, I'm sure he's going to come back. Didn't happen. The simple play from Pasha. As soon as he got the bomb done, you knew that one was over. There's so many options for him to get in there, and the retake of Orb is always famously difficult. And now we look at this. We can see the, the pistol buy from Cloud9. They haven't got anything to play with whatsoever. Just some P250s and 5.7s, no utility at all. And as soon as uh, VP worked that out, they op opened up the map to him so well. They can just play the long range game and uh, looking towards that drop down area again. Wouldn't be surprised if he went towards A and went through the connector. And Verdas Pro now is so close to making it through to those quarterfinals. Getting their spot and carrying on the run. 14 to 8 here. Cloud9 just being a little shy in this one, not quite having that presence in their CT side. And as you said, once First Pro get the idea of what's going on this round, this should be another clean one. This shouldn't be too difficult for them. Well, the absolutely phenomenal round of Cloud9. You get a look at the range they've got as well. They've been taken out of the map completely. They've got no positional control on the B-bomb side. The bomb does go down, no kits with the guys. The only option here is to go for some exit kills, but it's going to be completely trivial at this point. Like, the economy is so strong for VP. Bomb going down once again. It's, it's difficult times at Cloud9. And now we go on to map points. And uh, I don't know what to say for Cloud9. This is, this is too far gone for them. This is uh, pretty much GG at this stage. They've got a massive amount of decline. Seven rounds in a row required. And considering the way it's gone so far, I just don't believe right now. Yep. It's all spiraled a little out of control. Nothing will find Bialy, but now being hunted down by two players here. Almost three. And maybe looking for a couple more. Maybe he'll be able to take down Pasha. They're being so tensive, so cautious. Oh, he just got him before the flash. He got the tag, but... Nothing more. Virtus Pro will put themselves onto that ever important match point marker. And 15 to 8 now, one more round. And Virtus Pro are in those quarterfinals. And so far, their T side has been so brutal, so brilliantly done. And Cloud9 have not found an answer. They've not been able to stop it. Skadoodle's been a little quiet. He's not had the biggest of impacts in this one. And he's glass cannoning this, maybe just hoping. 
he can pull something out of the bag here, but it looks like Verse Pro have something in mind and they're not going to be slow about this one. Yeah, they've got so many in the bags. He can do these whole Mary plays and get straight in there. Snacks showing such control here. Shroud's going to be the point man. Can he make anything of this? Flashbang comes in and he is going to get shut down, but looks a bit fully blind. And there it is, Boyali. Oh, it up. the spray as well. Bialy's not going to get one. He gets two, but this is better. Maybe. Oh, look at this. Snacks and Neo just picking up two out of nowhere. Freakazoid is in a dire predicament. He has very little to work with and even less now. Taz held his nerve and Virtus Pro just smashing it on that T side. Beautifully done by them. Cloud9 showed a great game, but it just wasn't enough. Absolutely. Like I said before, like Cloud9, a running trend for them is the economy management. I, they know they rely so heavily on Skadoodle and they, they, they need him to be the linchpin of the whole map. Why force by in the second round? I think that was the biggest mistake they could have made. I said at Sivo as well, they did the same thing against CLG and it puts them in such a difficult situation, not having their key player going into that round. The T side for them was so strong as well, six rounds in a row. That looked yep. like they were just taking it like all the way. It was really impressive stuff for them, but ever since that flurry of rounds, they didn't get much more from there and losing both pistols as well. It's a game and that was a, a masterclass from VP. Very impressive stuff from them and Cloud9 obviously going to be disappointed with that, but what an exciting series that was. Like It really it's was beautiful. back and forth, right? Like we saw so many masterclasses in dis different disciplines. Cloud9 showing how efficient they can be at taking the B-bomb side. Like, VP had no response for so long, but they come back into it and that's what makes them a world-class team and uh, the NA destroyers as we've coined them so far. Yeah, they're living up to that title, quite certain, <laughs> certainly. And even Taz, uh, a little bit uh, patriotic there, it seems. Maybe trying to keep up with the NA boys after all their videos with the uh, flag draped over the shoulders. Mm. But still, you've got to say it, Virtus Pro looking like they're in the right form here. They've looked strong. They look like they can go forward. They've got their place now into those quarterfinals. So certainly very deserving of that. I absolutely love their play throughout this. Yeah. But then again, Cloud9, I think we can say they look improved. They look like a team who've... Their, their, their T side not... was impressive. Let's not take anything away from that. Yeah, CT... It, I, I'm unfortunately at this stage when you're at the major, I'm not looking for improvement, I'm looking for wins. Like, there was obviously some great rounds there. there then. But, yeah, you need... You, you need to be converting that that momentum you gained. Yeah, so. And it looked like they were so strong and they were going to take that easily. It looked like VP had no response whatsoever. Yep. But that, that the T C T side was pretty abysmal, unfortunately. Like I said, the, the economy management, they need to rely on players like Skadoodle. They know he's such an important yep. asset to them. And he just didn't arrive on the CT half. They was until like that sixth round, he actually got the AWP. And then yep. VP adjusted their play and holding the top of middle area with Neo there. Sean Garrett as well, he had a very quiet game. I think he finished the series quiet. on five frags. So he was almost non-existent as well. <sighs> A lot of questions there, I can imagine, from both sides. But the one that I really want to hear answered is going to be coming from the man, Taz. He's on the expert desk. Guys, take it away. Thank you very much. We do have Taz here, so congratulations. You guys get your first seed from Group D. The winners of Group D, you secure your Thank spot you. in the playoffs of uh, ESL1 here at the Major. Moses, you want to open us up with some questions here about that last match? I just why why do you why do you like beating up on Cloud Nine every every time like why what is it what's uh, I don't I think that uh, we just enjoy playing against them I don't know why but it seems like we have a very easy read into what they are trying to do because th their team is structured in a way that no other team on you know, top level is which is Sean Gers is deciding on all the aspects. Mm. And he's like uh, doing all the tactics, doing all the anti-tactics, he's moving his players, and like uh, when you read his mind, you don't need to worry about other players, which you actually have to worry in uh, different teams. I mean, I'm not saying that they are not skilled, right? because they're insanely skilled when it comes to shooting and probably into creative moving, but Sean is probably not letting them doing all these creative moves. It's everything is planned. And when you read it into one man's plan, it's easy to actually find out the other pieces. Well, the whole thing with Cloud9 is they lose to a team, they figure out the puzzle, they beat them. They've lost to you guys like a billion <laughs> times, whatever it might be. Like, well, what do you guys... You're, are you switching anything up against them? Actually, I thought that they switched up. Like, we won the pistol, we won the second, third round, and then they won, like, six rounds in a row. And we had a big, tr like, a lot of trouble. I think we were a bit lucky to even win uh, the next round or two rounds because their attack was really good, like, against what we uh, used to play. And we actually ne never practiced against a team 
uh, did the same kind of strategy, like very fast push and uh, smokes and flashes, so we cannot even take the uh, upper mm -hmm, the deck, plateau, yeah. yeah, the plateau. But right. uh, you're making it sound like it's more committee work on your team right now, as in like everybody chimes in and says, uh, who's calling for Virtus Pro this tournament? I mean, I'm calling mm -hmm. since uh, the l our Valencia trip, our uh, fa fa fan favorite uh, Zero Sixteen. Yeah, can I have some on chat? I probably can. <laughs> uh, and some kappas as well to make it even, please. And, uh, okay, so, but the thing is, or forehead, forehead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get those right. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is that um, I'm leading the team. I call the strats, but all the guys are giving information, like giving their ideas, and Cuban as well. Like, I ask them a lot of times that when I lead, I really need them to give the ideas from their positions. Like, if they have good position on map, and I have a plan to play, but Neo is going, let's go A, I can kill the guy soon, I, it's no smokes here, we can come. Okay, let's switch it up, let's go A, because I trust my players. Uh, I mean, this is the main idea of this game, to have uh, creative players who can adjust your tactics so the enemy cannot really, doesn't know what to do. Right. Tass, I remember you telling me at some point that uh, you can only call in this team for like a couple of weeks and then everyone else hates you. How close <laughs> are we to uh, to that now? Are they still okay with you? Or? Three more days. I, I, I mean, I think that it's okay now because they already hate me. All right. Ah, yeah. okay. So, so it's a lot easier threshold. to chime in. Like, <laughs> oh. uh, they they already like, with a, like, we are two years together, almost two years. Yeah. So they already like have the full height, so it's easy now. Like, uh, <laughs> okay. I feel no pain and, anymore. Well, <laughs> and on, on a more serious note, if uh, if you got a souvenir Dragon Lord drop, can I have it? <laughs> it depends. If it's uh, with Kenny S, yeah. it's okay, it's yours. But if it's with uh, Pasha Biceps, it's mine. Uh, all right. Well, it looks like the deal okay. is made for you guys. I'm glad you're settling everything you need to here on the desk, Anders. <laughs> but once again, congratulations, Taz, Thank and of course to your team. Moving on to the playoffs, we'll see you play at the Lanxus Arena. That's pretty awesome. If you guys have missed any matches, we still have one more. But meanwhile, during the break, you can go ahead and check out the score. Esports you can download the app on the iOS App Store or Google Play, you can maybe read about one of their pieces on the returning champions this time for ESL 1 at Cologne. Meanwhile, we'll take a quick break and we'll return with the last match of the day. It will be the winner's match of Group C.